Hi everyone. Welcome back to Frappe School. My name is Lynette Sherin and this is the 7th chapter in our advanced accounting course. Today, we will be discussing multi-currency accounting. By the end of this chapter, you will have learned why multi-currency accounting is important and how ERP Next enables it, how to create foreign currency accounts, how to set up exchange rates and calculate transactions accordingly, how to calculate gain and loss based on fluctuating exchange rates, how to revalue accounting balances based on existing exchange rates. Many organizations don't just operate within one country, they operate internationally. It is obvious that situations will come up where payments are made or transactions are conducted in a currency different from the organization's local currency. Here, multi-currency account comes into play. Keeping a clear record of multi-currency transactions is important since exchange rates fluctuate every single day and maintaining correct exchange rates and amounts helps accounting or closing books at the end of the accounting period easier. In ERP Next, you can make accounting entries and transactions in multiple currencies and collate them to the local currency. ERP Next allows you to create ledgers in multiple currencies, convert transactions using exchange rates, record gain or losses as well, and also enable exchange rate revaluations. Re we will first have to set up a bank and debtors account in our chart of accounts in the foreign currency we will be using. Let's open the chart of accounts by navigating to the accounting module or searching for it in the awesome bar. As we can see here, the chart of accounts is shown in a tree structure with parent accounts and subsequent child accounts. Let's try creating a new account in the system by selecting the current assets parent account and going to the bank accounts under there. Then we can click on the add child button. Let's take an example where our company local currency is USD, but we are adding a bank account in INR for our transactions in India. Here we will first have to add an account name. Let's say IDBI bank INR. Next. We add the account number, define if this account is a group and then choose an account type. Here we select bank. As we can see, there are a lot of other account types to choose from. Lastly, we select the currency for this bank account and then click on create new to add this to our chart of accounts. We can add multiple accounts for multiple currencies as per what we need. We can also assign or modify the currency by opening a specific accounting ledger providing there is no general ledger entry created against it. Next, we can go to our accounting receivables in the chart of accounts. Here, we can see a debtor's ledger for all local currency customers, but for foreign currencies, we will have to create a debtor's account in that currency, for us in INR. We can add child in accounts receivable and create a debtor's INR account here. Now we can see multiple debtor's account here. Next, we need to set up exchange rates for accurate calculation. ERP Next is integrated with exchange rate dot host to fetch up to date currency exchange rates automatically. We can also manually add our own exchange rates by using the currency exchange doc type. Search for it in the awesome bar. Here we can add a custom exchange rate by clicking on add currency exchange and add one for INR. Once we have set up our accounts and exchange rate, 
we need to set up a customer and link them to the appropriate debtor's account. We can navigate to the customer list by searching for it in the awesome bar. Here, we can see a list of all existing customers in the system and add a new one by clicking on the Add Customer button. Let's assume that a new customer, Gulmohar LLP, is an Indian customer. When we add this customer to our system, we can manually select their currency in the Currency and Price List section. Next, we can link the debtor's account we just created to this customer in the Accounting section. Now, the records for this customer will be in INR and will be added to the debtor's INR account. Once we've linked the accounts receivable and specified currency, we can add other important details for this customer and then save it. Now, let's create a sales invoice and a payment entry. First, let's navigate to the sales invoice list using the awesome bar. In the new sales invoice, first, we will select the customer. Once we do, we will be able to see that the currency we have set for the particular customer is automatically fetched in the currency section along with the current exchange rate. The debtor's account will also be automatically fetched as we can see here in the accounting section. Next, we can select the items and their quantities. We will then save the invoice. Once we save, we can see that the rate is specified in USD and INR as well. Since this is a multi-currency transaction, we can permanently submit this transaction now. Let's check out two reports before we move on. We can go to our general ledger report, use the filter for a specific currency. We can filter INR and we see here the transactions we have carried out. Also, you can see the posting value in INR or any other currency when we select a currency. Do note that in ERP next, for the account in foreign currency, the values in GL entry is posted in both account currency that is INR and company's base currency that is USD. Next, we can go to the account receivables report by searching for it using the awesome bar. Filter the report by the customer we are using for our example. And here we can see that the transaction will show in the customer's currency. Now, we will create a payment entry. We can navigate to payment entry list by searching for it in the awesome bar. From here, we can create a new payment entry by clicking on Add Payment Entry. Since we are adding a payment from a customer, the payment type should be Receive. Now, we can select the customer. In the account section, the debtor's account will be selected in the Account Paid From field and in the Account Paid To field, we can add our INR Bank account. Since we are receiving payments in INR, our Amount field will also be filled in INR. Let's fill in the amount paid as per the invoice we have created. We can see that the current exchange rate will automatically be fetched and the payment will be converted into USD as well. Now, we should note that the exchange rates may differ since invoice and payment may not be made on the same day. Let's consider that at the time of payment, the exchange rate was higher than it was when the invoice was created. We can show the difference here. The payment in USD will change accordingly. Next, we can fetch outstanding invoices for this customer and add them to the payment reference table. The write-off section will show the allocated amount that was paid by the customer. Since this amount is different from the invoicing amount, we need to record it in the deductions or losses section. We can do this using the button here or manually add a row. 
select our exchange gain loss account that is already present in the chart of accounts and select a cost center then we will type in the amount of profit or loss if it is profit it will go as a negative amount if there was a loss the amount would be in positive once we have added the rest of the details for this payment entry we can save and permanently submit it if we go back to our general ledger we can see that the idbi inr account has been credited with the payment made by the customer we can filter the report by currency and see that in inr we see the paid amount converted to usd and the difference amount based on the exchange rate as well if we change the currency to usd the report will show transactions in customer currency without conversion Let's now move on to exchange rate revaluation. When we are closing our books for the month, we need a current exchange rate to convert our foreign currency ledgers. For this, we use exchange rate revaluation. We can navigate to this by searching for it in the awesome bar. When we click on add new exchange rate revaluation and select a posting date, this is usually the end of the month. Now we can click on the get entries button to automatically fetch the foreign currency ledgers once the accounts are added to the table we can see the current exchange rate here and subsequently we can see the gain or loss per the exchange rate then we can save and permanently submit this exchange rate revaluation from here we can create a journal entry to record this exchange rate revaluation once we do this we can see in the accounting entry section that the gain or loss we have from our transaction is shown according to the ledgers we can save and submit this journal entry and see that the amount is updated in the chart of accounts as well this brings us to the end of the 7th chapter in our advanced accounting course I hope this helped you understand how to seamlessly use ERP Next for multi currency transactions. You can read more about ERP Next on docs.erpnext.com. Thank you.